Welcome back. Welcome back, my fellow physics enthusiasts. Today I'm going to talk about a very important topic, and this topic is uh, called stress energy momentum tensor. Perhaps you have called it stress tensor, perhaps you have called it energy momentum tensor, perhaps you have called it stress energy tensor, but all of it leads to the same thing, this object here, which is called the stress energy momentum tensor, or in short, SEM tensor. It's a very, very important topic. It comes up in various contexts. Uh, probably the earliest exposition to this uh, topic uh, took place in when you were studying electromagnetism, and there was the first time when you studied this tensor. If you haven't, uh, then in future courses you are very likely to face it. And I suggest uh, if you have taken advanced courses but you haven't seen stress energy momentum tensor, you should immediately dive into it to get back to the textbooks and explore this topic a little bit. So in your study of differential geometry or while studying general relativity, you have perhaps came across the idea that uh, tensors can be thought of a machine. And uh, this time I'd like to invoke that idea once again. Uh, it would be enormously helpful for us if you utilize th those concepts uh, so that it makes things uh, a lot more intuitive. Uh, so, so obviously, like all tensors, the stress energy tensor, stress energy momentum tensor, or stress tensor, or just SEM tensor, uh, is linear. And it is a zero to tensor. What does that mean? It means this tensor acts like a function or a machine. And this can have two inputs. So I'm writing two slots here. Uh, this is slot number one, slot one, and this is slot number two. And you can plug in two vectors into these slots, right? The first thing we recognize uh, about the stress sensor is that it is a linear machine, just like all other tensors, uh, with two slots. Uh, and in those two slots, you can plug in two different vectors. They can be the same, but uh, there has to be two vectors, right? So zero to tensor, tensor. So that's number one. And then number two would be that these two slots are interchangeable and T does not depend on that. So not only this machine is a linear machine, but it is also symmetric. Symmetric in its two inputs uh, and uh, in case of those inputs you can plug in vectors. Then the next question would be, uh, what does this tensor give us? I mean, what is the information content uh, in this tensor? What does it describe? So the thing uh, a stress energy momentum tensor describes is obviously the mass and energy content uh, of the space that you define it in. Uh, and obviously, it's a geometric object, it's defined at every point, so the mass energy distribution at uh, any point will be encoded in here. Now, that part is a little vague, but uh, if we want to be precise, we can list it in here. So the first thing it will give us is mass uh, energy energy density. So as we know uh, from the context of relativity, uh, mass and energy are held onto the uh, same status. So uh, if I could have simply said energy density and that would cover mass. So the first thing about it is obviously mass energy density, uh, but uh, that's not complete. I, I have to also tell you uh, it also encodes uh, the momentum density, right, momentum density, and um, 
distress associated with any point uh, where we are interested in uh, the stress sensor. And uh, this is, in general, the content of the stress sensor. Now, importantly, since uh, we are emphasizing on uh, the relativistic aspects of the stress sensor, is that uh, the, all of these things that are mentioned here, the mass energy density, the momentum density, uh, the stress, uh, all of those are described uh, when we are talking about some sort of field. And we can talk about all sorts of fields, and we know that all the contents of the universe can be described in terms of some field. But one field it doesn't particularly talk about, and that is the gravitational field, right? And that's, uh, in a sense, the essence of the general relativity. In the eyes of relativity, gravity isn't a separate force. I mean, it's its impact it can be manifested by a force specifically which we call the tidal force but it's sort of a matter of nomenclature uh, the tidal force is the manifestation of gravity it's not the source it's not any field uh, it's 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 a force in the sense that we can observe it but it's not uh, associated uh, with any uh, other type of fields. So whenever we talk about uh, the energy momentum tensor, especially in relativity, we talk about all these things associated with non-gravitational non-gravitational fields, right? So that's that's an important thing to remember.